Hey, what's going on, Internet? So I just built an entire MCP server in under 20 minutes, just using AI, no coding experience required. Oftentimes when I look online, people tend to overcomplicate the concept of MCP servers and connecting AI to different tools and data sets. And in this video, I want to show you my exact process for how I use Vibe coding to create MCP servers with AI. And with that being said, let's get started. Alrighty. So as always, we have a really cool drawing that's been given to us from OpenAI. Now in this drawing, we have an individual that is creating an MCP server. So instead of going through the process of explaining exactly what MCP servers are in this video, I'm just gonna give you a quick rundown and then I'm gonna talk you through my process of how I create them. So what is an MCP server at, a, at, at, at the highest of highest levels? Simply put, it's a way to connect AI to a variety of tools and data sets. That's really it. So here we have our tools and then we have our MCP server here that's connecting AI to those data sets. That's really what it is and how it functions. If you want to know more, I have other videos elsewhere, but for now, we're going to keep it at that. Okay, so what are we going to cover here? There's three things I want to cover here. First is what are we going to give to the MCP server and what's kind of entailed in that? Next is what did we build? And then last is how did we do it? So first we'll do a quick rundown of what we're going to give access to for our MCP server. So any MCP server that has access to anything, and this really comes down to what are you giving access to your AI? So MCP server is kind of a, an abstract term that not many people understand. You can ignore that concept. Just understand that we're giving our AI access to things. So these things we're giving our AI access to are, first is tools. So we're going to give it access to tools so it can go off and do things. So that could be searching the web, searching code bases, um, calling different tools to conduct actions, et cetera. Next is we're going to give access that AI to additional data sets. So that can be pulling data sets from your CRM, from your email, from your calendar, somewhere else, Slack, etc. And then last is dynamic prompts, or kind of just prompts in general. And they're dynamic in nature. They can be, but sometimes they're not. And what these prompts are is they're basically uh, extracting the data sets that are relevant, and then they're concatenating all that together into a prompt that it's then fed to an AI to determine what it should do with the ask from the end user. So it's like, should I, you know, ask, should I do something with a tool? Should I do something else with the data that's been provided to me or whatever else? So it's acting as kind of like a, uh, think of it as like a structure around the different things we're using with the AI. All right, and then what did we build? So in this case, the idea I came up with is a MCP server that when interacted with, it pulls back different daily space photos from NASA's API and gives you a brief AI summary of what's in that photo so you can learn a little bit more about it. So in this case, this picture shows a comet Soho in the night sky with its bright head and long tail passing near stars and clouds in the constellation Orion. This photo was taken in Australia where people saw the comet get much brighter. So you can see this is a cool photo here. And our MCP server, if I go over here, I'll kind of walk you through what this, later, what this is later, but in a nutshell, we have our different tools here. So these different tools our AI has access to. When I say run tool, it's going to then run that tool with the MCP server. It's going to pull back the image as well as the summary. So you can see here, it came back with a success. It gave us some insights here. And at the top, it gave us the summary. So this is a picture that we're going to look at. And if we go down here, it's actually a cool picture of the sun. That's pretty neat. So you have a full description of what's in the image. And this is from the API from NASA but I'm using GPT 4.1 to summarize this in a very specific way. So in this instance, we go here, say this is a picture of the sun showing a lot of activity, including big, uh, big sunspots and bright streaky areas. The sun is getting more active after being quiet and we can see cool features because the special coloring. So you can see that, that's uh, it's pretty dope. All right, so that is the MCP server we created. And now the question is, how did we do this in under 20 minutes with AI? Well, the process is simple, and the process I used is very similar to what I've used in the past for vibe coding applications in production and a variety of other methods. And we'll start with uh, AI, and we'll kind of go through each one of these uh, points as we kind of talk through the process. So first, we start with a reverse interview with AI, and that's going to be this segment here. Now, this is something that I do for more than just creating applications and MCP servers, but it's something I also recommend people try doing for deep research. So if there's a specific type of research you want AI to do, I recommend having the system prompt you create to pass off to the AI to do the research derived from an interview with another AI. So what does this actually mean? Well, what I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to have this AI ask me a bunch of questions to create a system prompt. The system prompt I'm going to create is going to then be passed down into this section here, which is going to be me creating a cloud project or a ChatGPT project that has a baked in system instruction that when I give it an idea of an MCP server I wanna create with some additional documentation if I have any, it's going to then spit back to me a blueprint of exactly how I can build this with a bunch of system prompts that I'll pass off to an AI engineer that would be down here. So it's gonna give me a bunch of system prompts that I'll pass off one at a time into Cursor, WinSurf, or whatever else, where I can have an AI engineer develop this MCP server for me at a rapid pace using a variety of things that are um, making the process much faster. That's the overall flow. So let me show you what an example looks like of this type of interview. So first you can see the model I chose. Right now we're using O4 Mini High. Reason being is that it needs to be fast and it needs to be smart. Why? Well, when I do an interview, I don't wanna wait forever for it to respond. Also, I want to ensure that the questions and answers it's giving back are high quality. So I have to find a happy medium, which often is a smart but fast model. Now this here is an example of me giving it context as to what I want it to ask me and the idea, or at least not the idea, but what I'm trying to achieve with this interview. And this is done through dictation. So I use Super Whisper to do this process. I have a hotkey on my keyboard where if I press this button here, when I speak, it's converting my voice to text. If I stop it, you can see that it gives you back the information here. I do that because it saves me time and effort. So it's just much easier to rant at the AI instead of typing everything out. Another thing I'll call out here is this segment here, the first paragraph of this second, or first sentence of the second paragraph is the type of interview we're having. So oftentimes, if you just have an interview with an AI, it might throw a bunch of questions at you, and that's not useful. What you want it to do is you want it to ask you one question at a time. Every answer you provide it, it should inform the next question it asks. Reason being is this is slowly going to steer the AI in the direction we want it to go to achieve the task we're aiming for. And in that case, for this specific situation, is we're trying to have it create a system prompt that we can then put into another AI to act as a ChatGPT project that then creates our blueprint. So down here, I've given it some additional context as well. So if you know that you're going to use a certain thing inside of that, uh, that ChatGPT project, you should specify that. In this case, I knew that I was going to use FastMCP 2.0 because it's, it's a way to create MCP servers much faster um, using some sort of scaffolding. And one of the benefits with this interview process is that the questions that are asked aren't just open-ended questions, because if they were, it might be really hard for us users to answer them effectively and accurately. And the AI often gives us assistance. One of the ways it gives assistance could be giving examples. So it asks a question and then says, for example, blah, 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 blah. And that helps us have something to choose from. And if it's not giving us just examples, sometimes you can even outsource the answer of the question to the AI that asked the question in the first place. So it's kind of like a snake eating its own tail. But it still is useful if you don't know the answer to a question that it's asked. So in this answer, this this case, I gave it an answer, uh, asked me another question, gave it an answer, asked another question, gave it an answer. At the very end of this, you have the system prompt. So this is the system prompt we're going to use to have our GPT project create the um, the blueprint for us. And here is that system prompt in a Google Doc, so you can see it better. I specifically want to call out a few things here. So one thing is at the very top, you can see that I'm labeling it or it labeled it as an expert. And then I've added that it's a expert at building MCP clients and servers. We've re-specified the fast MCP 2.0 scaffold. Reason being is that's gonna be the faster way of creating these servers. Also, we've stated that the docs are inside of its knowledge base, so it knows to reference that. Another really important thing here is that the prompts that it's going to provide us in the blueprint should be standalone. Reason being is if you don't ask this, sometimes the prompts will reference each other. And if they reference each other, that may make it more difficult for us in the future when we're passing these prompts off in individual conversations with other AIs inside of Cursor or Windsurf, they might not have the context of previous prompts if it doesn't have context of the blueprint, which it should, but if it doesn't, it makes it more difficult. Um, it gives specifics on the format of what the prompt should look like and a variety of other things. Last thing I'll call out here, or second to last thing I'll call out here is uh, reminding it that it's going to feed prompts into an AI that specializes in writing code. That for me just helps ensure that the prompts are going to have that understanding and context associated. And then the last thing I'll mention here is what the user is going to give to the AI. So this is the system prompt, but what's the user going to give me so I can give it a blueprint back? And it specifically calls out ideas, APIs, and documentation. So sometimes you might not necessarily have a good idea of what API and documentation will be associated to your idea. So you can use another AI to, to fill in that process. And that's what this little diversion is over here on the left. So instead of 
going straight from the system prompt to the blueprint, I'm going to take a diversion into creating a specific idea that I want to share um, with the ChatGPT project for that blueprint. And I'll use O3 in this case to come up with ideas. So I ideate with the O3 model to figure out what type of MCP server do I want to create that I think is interesting and fun for this video. And that was the space image thing I just shared with you. So to do that, I had a conversation with O3 and we came up with that idea. And when we came up with this idea, it then gave me um, the specific API and it gave me the specific docs we needed and API keys, et cetera, for this process. And in addition to just giving me the idea, I also asked it to give me a specification. So that's this conversation here. So I'm talking to O3, we're going back and forth and it gives me a specification. So it gives a breakdown of exactly what we wanna build and what associated technology and architecture is with inside of this. So I can then copy and paste the specification and the idea of what I wanna build and I can paste that into our project, which is down here to create that blueprint. And to create the blueprint, we can use a variety of models. We don't just have to use ChatGPT, um, GPT projects. We don't have to use cloud projects. We can actually use gems from Gemini, which is just like everything else I mentioned, they just have different names. And I've actually tried for this use case in this example, I've tried all three to see how, how, how the blueprints looked and the associated quality for each. In the end, 2.5 Pro won. And 2.5 Pro not always wins, but often wins in this case. Reason being is that its output context window is a lot larger than the other models. So the prompts tend to be more detailed, which makes it easier for the model that's doing the coding to execute without too many errors and bugs in the process. So in this case, I used this output from here. And then after we got the output, we would just feed in the prompts one at a time into Claude or into Cursor to create the MCP server for us. And in this case, I used a mix of models. I used 4.1 to start with, but then I diverted to Sonnet 4 and to just to see how it would perform. And Sonnet 4 by far performed way more accurately without many errors associated to 4.1. So I ended up using Sonnet 4. So that's our process. Let me show you what the blueprint looks like from Gemini. So this here is the spec. So I paste in the spec that I just shared with you from over here into Gemini. And in here, we have a, an additional note that I added because I wanted to, to understand that we're not going to use Cloud Desktop for the MCP client because that's the way you interact with the server. We're not going to use that. We're actually going to use MCP Inspector, which is what I just showed you previously with the image. And I can just go back here really quick. That's what this is. So MCP Inspector is just a client that you can use to interact with the server itself. But you can use really anything to interact with these servers. And then um, also I stated, because I know that in the spec, they mentioned that it should use streamable HTTP. And that's the newest way to communicate between uh, client and server right now. But there's uh, standard IO. And then I think the other one is, um, what is the other one? It's standard IO. And I think it's SSE maybe. Open this thing up. Yeah, SSE is the other one. The reason I didn't use uh, streamable HTTP is because it's such a new one. They just released this like a week ago. And it wasn't necessarily compatible with some of the things I was playing with. So I just I defaulted to the standard IO because it's local and it's not remote and I'm not using it kind of in production for anything. So this is uh, this is what you do. You just give it a brief note, you paste in the spec, and then it spits back the blueprint. So if I scroll down here, that is not easy to read, but down here is what we wanna see. So here's the prompt. So you can see prompt one, and then the markdown kind of got messed up here, but that's all right. We would just copy this out and put that into cursor. And then this is prompt two. You would copy this out, put it into cursor, prompt three copy it out, put it in the cursor, et cetera. And you would go through each one of these and each one of these, you'd obviously have to make slight edits and verify like, uh, and minor tweaks as you go because you need to add API keys and things like that. But it's very straightforward and very simple to do. And then one other thing that I wanted to call out here is in the process of doing this, and I probably laid this out, not the, gr the greatest way, but we'll, uh, we'll change color so it's easier for you to see. So I'm gonna connect this one to here. This green line is connecting these two. So when you're doing a research on the what, the O3 model is going to help you figure out some documentation that's relevant. So in this case, we wanted to pull in the MCP protocol documentation, fast MCP v2 documentation, and the NASA API documentation. The reason we wanted to, oh, and also the MCP inspector as well. So that's a, that's a last one. We'll do that. MCP inspector is another one we added. So these are all docs that we're going to add into cursor so we can add them periodically through pasting in these prompts because sometimes and I recommend reading the prompt before you paste it in just so you can learn but here you can see it mentioned okay it mentioned fast mcp here 
And did it mention anything else in here? So it's mainly talking about fast MCP. So in that case, when I paste this in a cursor, I'm going to at MCP. So if I go here, I would be in cursor and I would say, okay, at fast MCP, and I would at the docs, I would then go in here and I would paste in that first prompt. So I'd go in here, paste that in, and I'd make sure that like, is there anything else that it's calling out that I should at? It mentioned a Docker file at the bottom, but I'm not too worried about that because I'm not going to deploy this. So I think, all right, that's good. So I then pushed enter and then it would go off and start building that. And that's what you want to do with each one of these in the how. And when implementing this is you want to look at and read it and say like, what is it referencing? Okay, so here it's referencing NASA. So in this case, if, if it's referencing NASA, I've already added the NASA documentation to the project. So I would go here, I would do at NASA, and then I have a NASA API TXT. So this is a NASA API pulled from their, their website. So here it's basically a website that has a PDF that explains how to use this API endpoint to then get docs back. So I, I basically pulled that in and used that to um, speed up the development process by adding these documents. Because if you add the documents throughout the development process when you're pasting in these prompts, it's going to avoid errors. It's going to not code in the wrong way to code to an old API or to a deprecated endpoint, et cetera. So it's just a faster way to do this. All right. And then my friends, is it? It's a very short, straightforward process. It's, it's not difficult to create MCP servers and you don't need to know code to do this. You just need to be able to ask AI in a methodical way, in the correct way. And if you have that framework and process in place, you can really create any type of MCP server for anything, meaning that you can connect your AI to any tool or data set that you're interested in connecting it to. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, reshare it with your friends. And if you're interested in working with me, I have a company called Gradient Labs, where we help other companies implement AI internally to automate different processes, saving time, money, and generating revenue. So if that is at all interesting to you, below is the link for a 30-minute call. It's a free call to see if there's a good fit between the two of us. And with that being said, internet, I'll see you next time.